Hi Joyce, thanks for taking the time to meet with us and share more about drinking your coffee while it's hot. Okay, uh... Actually, I'm a mother, so I can I can empathize with the struggles of motherhood. And I want to specifically say that this book is called Drink Your Coffee While It's Hot, Enjoying Your Toddler Years Without Losing Yourself. Now, it's specifically targeted at toddlers. So uh, people may ask, why? Why toddlers? Because I believe that the toddler years is a very small window. Just three, four years, and then they grow up too fast. That's why like coffee cools down very fast. Mm -hmm. Let me take a sip <laughs> while it cools down. Mm. Mm. So children grow up too fast. Mm. And uh, the toddlers is a perfect age group to imprint your value. You know, I think another author puts it this way. Uh, children are like wet cement. You know, so they dry so fast and then you can't do very much after that. So toddlers, they are not babies. Babies, they don't understand. They just want to be fed and changed. But toddlers can actually engage with you. So that's where you can, you can uh, impart your values, you know. You can teach them new things. And, and I tell you, toddlers are beautiful people because they believe everything you say. That's why I wrote this book to, to um, use it as a watch and learn tool. It's not so much a technical book, you know, like five steps to regain your sanity. It's not that kind of book, you know. It is a book about stories, you know, stories of people, people that have been through motherhood, people who, who are mothers themselves. Mm -hmm. And so because it's a watch and learn book, I think it's much more easier to practice the principles that are laid out there. Mm. Mm. Um, this book is for the family because essentially it takes a village to raise a child. So it's mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, and I'm a grandmother. So I'm really engaged with uh, bringing up my granddaughter. Although my children are all grown up, I know, already married, but um, my granddaughter is someone whom I want to have an impact on, able to influence. So, uh, so for grandmas and grandpas as well, of course, is is targeted, especially for mothers, because mothers uh, takes the brunt of the parenting load. Fathers are important too. Fathers are support. You know, men, they say very little. But I think for fathers, their presence, their physical presence is important. So it's also for them, so that they understand what their wives are going through. Uh, it's for them also to appreciate the, the burdens. Oftentimes, uh, they are borne by their wives alone. Uh, okay. Um, I think in Singapore, the coffee culture is really mushrooming, you know. That's why in my book, I included interviews with these coffee places, specialty coffee. So I call them my coffee maestros. You know, they really can concoct up a cup of, wow, fantastic brew. And uh, why drink your coffee? Because coffee is a mood enhancer. So when you drink your coffee, mm, and you, you begin to relax and begin to um, take a better view of what you're going through. Like, you know, it, it kind of um, makes you more um, positive, more optimistic about the, the struggles you're going through. That's why coffee breaks are so important. You know? <laughs> and of course, young mothers you know, find it very little time to have coffee breaks. That's why this book is encourage them, take your time, you know, take your time. It's a window of opportunity, but you don't need to rush through it. Just take your time, enjoy the moment, celebrate the gift that's in your child, and create those, those memories uh, that will last a lifetime. So I say TCC, TCC, uh, the, the coffee, 
connection or now it's called the concier concerto. Um, take your time. Uh, create the memories, you know, and then cherish the gift of your children. Children are always happy, unless they're disciplined. <laughs> but they need to be disciplined also. So I think we must not view children like like uh, small people that don't understand. Actually, children are an adult in the making. So they do have they do have comprehension. They can understand. And so it's how you teach them. You teach them by example, you teach them by letting them watch what you do. So for example, if you want to teach a child patience, all right, you don't just say, I want you to be quiet, sit down. Two minutes, be quiet. I tell you, it will be a power struggle. The child will not be quiet, be fidgeting, and, and then you'll be tearing your hair out, you'll be screaming. I think a win-win situation is you show the child. Is the next five minutes, mom is going to be very quiet. And to help mom concentrate, you have to be quiet too. And to help us, there's this hour timer. Okay? You turn it to five minutes and say, darling, this hour timer is going to move. Alright? And while it's moving, we'll be very quiet. Mom will drink her coffee. She has a book to read or she has a report to write and you sit in your chair, eat your cereal, watch the oven timer. Be very quiet. And when the oven timer comes to the zero and it goes, that's where we shake our head and talk and we can we can have a discussion and we can talk and then we can go and make breakfast together, we can do so many things. But this next five minutes we're going to be very quiet. So this is something I find very workable for me now. when I was uh, um, grandmothering my granddaughter. So I taught her that and she was able to um, relate to the time factor which was very quiet. So um, this is a challenge for her because she learns to watch the time and she learns to play according to the rule, right? So she will be very quiet and when it's over, oh, ah, she feels so triumphant. Yes, I have managed to keep quiet for five minutes. So it's a win-win situation. You know, you don't have to be stressed out. You just show her very, very, um, very, very um, naturally how you enjoy your time of quiet and how she can also, you know? So children, can be taught anything, it's only how you teach it. Like I said, the toddler years is a very small window, one to three, four years old, um, and it's a very precious opportunity to share your personal values. Um, one value I think most parents would like to see in their children is gratitude. I think I have heard a lot of parents tell me, yeah, this boy is so ungrateful. Ayah, this girl is so ungrateful, never remember what I did for her. You know? and so parents struggle with that and, and children really don't realise that they are being ungrateful. You know? So... Um, as a toddler, we, we, we model gratitude and thank, uh, uh, thankful spirit through the way we treat the older folks in our own lives. So, for example, for me, I have an 86-year-old mother. I am a mother and a grandmother, but I also have an 86-year-old mother. So, at family meals, especially during Chinese New Year reunion, uh, wow, like a big family come together, you know, um, Young people usually sit down and they, they just eat. There were um, many occasions I find young people have forgotten the good table manners uh, of saying, is everyone seated, you know, before they eat. 
and there was a time when I was growing up where we had to call everybody. Ama eat, Akong eat, Ma eat, Auntie eat. You know, everybody you call already, then you start to eat. Nowadays they don't like. So, so it's, it's a change of time. But, but these are uh, um, age old values uh, that must not take a back seat. We still have to uh, teach our children to respect the next generation. And here again, children, they copy what they see. Lah. So at, at the dinner table, my 86-year-old mother is very slow. She walks with a walker. Everybody gets seated at the end. And then she will come. Then we will wait. You know, we'll pull out the chair for her. She sits down. And when she's seated, then we say our family prayers. You know, as Christians, we give thanks for the food. And we do that. And then we'll give her the best piece. All right. That's important for the children to see. So toddlers watch a soon and then they see. If not, they, they will never understand the value of uh, respect and honor. So there's a chapter in my book on that about <laughs> teaching this young boy, you know, uh, generosity and uh, and gratitude. There's no, no shortcut except spending time, mm -hmm. right? You know? and, and the time you spend is uh, not always need to be a teaching time. You, know? you don't always, whenever you sit down with your kid, is to teach them something. You know? Let the lesson come naturally. I think it's important. Like you bring your, your toddler to a supermarket, mm -hmm. all right? and then you, you teach the child about labels, la, about choosing the right kind of food and all that. You know? Um, that could take the fun out of shopping, but just go with the flow, whatever the kids picks up, you know, you take a look at it. If it's okay for you, you put it in a cart. If it's not okay, you offer an alternative rather than, oh, this is no good because this has too much sugar. And then you spend like two minutes teaching the child who is not listening because his eyes are everywhere. And so you just be very affirming, smile and say, wow, this is this is good, but not for now, maybe now we have this one. You know, then you add something else, a, a, a substitute. So, it need not always be a, a lecture time with kids. So, um, shopping, or supermarket shopping, or going to the beach, you know. I have a chapter about these two boys collecting shells uh, from, from the seashore, and how the mother just allowed them to run for the next 30 minutes to collect shells and then after that when she saw the product of their collection uh, there was a teachable moment mm -hmm. where she began to understand in fact it is the child that taught her that not all shells are perfect just like not all people are perfect mm -hmm. and she learned something from the child's perspective as well mm -hmm. so so it's two-way it's a two-way traffic you know the mother of course is older, been there, done that, and is in a position to, to teach, to impart wisdom. But there's a lot to be learned from young people, from kids also, because they see the world simply through the eyes of a child. You know? Like my second book, Keeping Life Simple, I get children to draw the pictures, the, the, the um, section dividers, and they have such amazing insight, you know. Like this child who has to draw patience. He says, I can only draw aeroplanes. I don't know how to draw what is patience. Huh? I said, how can you really relate patience to an aeroplane? And uh, the following week, he came back with this beautiful picture of an aeroplane. And his caption is, it takes time even to fly. Mm -hmm. That's patience. Yeah. You know? So I tell you, uh, kids uh, have more insight than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's a two-way traffic. You teach them, you learn from them. They they hear you, they learn from you, but they also have some things to teach you. Maybe not in words, but in their perception, in the way they see life, in the way they live life. I think it's that's that's important. Okay. Doctor ought to be here right now to take my blood pressure and see whether it's it's high or low. But um, by saying that, I am 
Uh, and simply meaning that you really don't need to always be so stressed out as a mother. Mm, if you ask a mother, you know, how are you? Most of the time she say stressed, you know. And they are stressed bringing up, um, they are stressed looking at the babies because they are all the physical needs. Then they are stressed raising toddlers because toddlers are always asking questions and running around. Then they are stressed uh, raising school uh, school age children because they are the exams. Then they are stressed raising teenagers because there is the, the, the dating period, you know, the staying out later than they should period. Mm. I mean, then they are stressed when the kids finally get married because, I you know, how will I look as a mother-in-law? <laughs> so the whole life is stress. I mean, what is life? If it's always stress, 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 you know? So that's why I say it's possible to raise your kids without raising your blood pressure. By that I mean, enjoy the journey. Lah. Mm. Huh? Take a longer view of life. You know? Nothing is is permanent, everything is changeable, you know. It's up to you to engineer the changes. Lah. But first, change yourself. You know, most important is self-care. I think here the message to mothers is take care of yourself because you're no good to anybody if you are sick or dead. You have to take care of yourself. Right? When we travel, we hear this announcement. In the case of an emergency, when the oxygen mask like this drop in the compartment above you, attend to yourself first before you attend to those under your care. So mothers, you have so many people under your care. Your children, your husband, yourself must not neglect. You need to look up to yourself. That's why take your coffee break, drink your coffee. It would be a place called home because home has many meanings to different people. To some people, home is sweet, it is a haven, a restful place, a place where there's good food, there's love, there's communication. But to others, home is like a battleground, it's a never-ending hot pot of strife. To others, home is a cold, lonely place. You know, it depends on what home is but to you because of your, your history. So I would speak on a place called home uh, and, and promote my book because if you really want to come home, to a place where there is unconditional love, where there is warmth, where there is understanding, where there is great communication, then the tips in this book will surely help. Fathers, this Mother's Day, don't buy your wife a vacuum cleaner. Buy her the book, drink your coffee while it is hot. <laughs>